in this video, we're gonna start working on like the next round of stuff that we have to focus on for next week. I take my custom sock store, Lulu Pup, to the next level. I also get a chance to talk to the sock master himself who provides me with incredible insight to make the most of this holiday season. Our targets are around 1.8 to probably 2.2 million. That's insane. Yeah. What's up guys, Chris here. So in part one of this series, I mentioned that part two would be out on 1021 and it did not happen. I'm sorry. A lot of you got very anxious and I understand. The truth is, I don't think I fully realized what I was getting myself into until after part one was finished. And man, it has been a lot. It's been a wild ride. We're making sales. We're spending hundreds of dollars per day on ads. We're building a team. Anyways, I don't want to get too far ahead right now. We'll break down the numbers and all that later in this video. But what I really want to do is rewind to three weeks ago and talk about everything that has happened leading up to now. Real quick, let me get you back up to speed with where we're at. We're sourcing our socks from Printify making our profit margin 1784. Our challenge selling these profitably is heavy saturation. Big dogs left and right already devouring the marketplace with their huge ad budgets. My objective is to brand these socks better than anyone else, which I'll be able to do through custom content and focusing on my customer experience. That will at least give me a fighting chance, which is all I need to get things going. Competitors have built million dollar companies selling these because they're popular and they're always going to sell, especially this time of year. So if they have figured it out, so will we. I was going through my email and got a message from a guy named Brennan. I get a lot of emails, but this subject line really stuck out to me. Brennan is the owner of an e-commerce store called Pet Party, selling, you guessed it, custom dog socks. This company has gone on to do over $1 million in sales and build a team of dozens. While Lulu Pup is a virtual business I can manage in my own apartment, Pet Party is all in-house. My interest has been captured. Now, I've actually ordered from these guys long before this series ever even started because I was so compelled by their, and here's the website right here, I was so compelled by their video ads. It was something that I seen the competition was not doing. I was dying to see this operation for myself. After working on Lulu Pup for the past four weeks, I have a lot of questions. I think it's gonna, it could be really big. I'm just hoping that we have all the resources in place. Am I on the right track? Will this business be profitable with the way I'm doing things? After getting the green light from Brennan. Yo, yo, Brennan, hey, I wanted to ask you if Wednesday of next week would be good for you. I book a flight for Andrew and I, and we head off to Oregon. I'm excited, dude. I can't believe you pulled this together that fast. And special thanks to Jade for picking us up from the airport. Be sure to give her a sub. Oh yeah, this one's Guys, good. we're at Brandon's. Wow. This is your third warehouse? Sort of. They're all in the same parking. I just keep moving. But... Oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah. So we have wow. like both of these. What? Wait. Whoa. Company name and everything. Wow. Okay. Uh, we got two reverse tickets. As you might be able to tell by my face, I am absolutely amazed the second I see this place. Let me make this clear. Brennan is only 19 years old and this is huge. We start the tour with me making an order on the website. So Brennan, I'm on your website right now and I'm actually about to place an order for a pair of socks. And I'm just curious when I purchase these socks right here, what, what, happens? what happens? What's the bot? What happens right after I place my order? This can be interesting. Just a quick note, there are two main companies Brennan manages inside the warehouse, Hoopswag and Pet Party. Yes, yeah, so basically you place an order. Right now there's people online that are cropping all of it. And then behind us we have white socks. And then over there there's a bunch more white socks. And then there's even more. Where this entire half of the building is dedicated to preparing socks to get made. So this is like phase one right here. This is phase after one. After the order, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, it, this is actually probably the most important step because like eliminating any issues later down the line kind of all start here. From a revenue aspect, how big is Pet Party? Yeah, so during Christmas this year, we'll probably do our targets around 1.8 to probably 2.2 million in sales. Wow. So that's sort of what we're aiming for, but that's all over 50 days. And so break that down per day and it's like 20, 40 grand a day, something like that. Are you printing anything, oh, Brian? Wow. No? Can you print like one row? No? Uh, yeah, let me go get the... Here's our printing room. These are our printers. They're like special ink and special paper that actually allows to do the printing on the socks. 
once an order comes in, it all the magical stuff in the cloud happens, it gets it cropped and everything, and then they get sent over to these printers, and so. Oh, we, so it's automatic, comes no, right No, no, so we have a manual person, which is okay. Mr. Brian here. And he's sending it to the printer. Yeah, so to Brian which does it all the printing okay. and manages all that, which is actually a very complex job. You basically like can't double print anything because it's all these. So these are all actually messed up socks from today. Let me note that Brian is Brennan's dad and this is his mom. They both work full time in the company. Okay. That we have to reprint the other half of, so. So this one here. Like, let's see what's wrong with this one. Right there. It's very minor things, but like there's a string. You see that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is, you know, you're choosing to not send this to a customer, yeah. but there's many companies that wouldn't care yeah. about that. It's a it's a quality sort of choice that you kind of yeah. make, and we just kind of set standards and roll with it. But at the, again, we are all about like the actual good product, good experience. I mean, look at that. You can barely, very minimal. Very minimal on there. Then there's a whole other army of people online. We have another hundred that are doing stuff online that no one knows. Hundred fifty people. That's insane. As for let's say people cropping the images, yeah. how, how many people would you say? Ooh. 70 probably wow. yeah 70 people just so that because like i tried to eliminate all bottlenecks and so that was like a bottleneck last year is we can't crop them fast enough and we can't do any of the manufacturing if they're not cropped and so it's just a matter of removing all these different bottlenecks normally we'll let them actually just pull up and then we'll chop all the paper up which is you can actually see what these are these are just long sheets of paper that someone will come in in the morning and chop all them up into, into individual sheets so we've got okay. like one two three four literally if someone during christmas that will cut for wow. 10 to 12 hours a day Ridiculous. That's interesting. We go through thousands of scissors, so Scott. I bet. Yeah. Have you ever worn out a pair of scissors, Andrew? Where are they? Have you really? I have, actually. This whole operation right here, it's really cool. Tell me how it all started, how it came to be. I started when I was like 13, and I just wanted like my own pair of really colorful socks, and then I ended up literally buying my own manufacturing equipment. I'm Brennan Agronoff. I'm the owner and founder of Hoop Swag. So like these smaller heat presses, right? And then after that, I mean, I literally slowly expanded. It took five or four years before I got anything that was even bigger than that. Brennan Agronov is the founder and CEO of Hoop Swag, a custom design sock business that he runs from his backyard. I have enough pairs of socks um, in this warehouse to get wear a new pair every day until I uh, die. And then two years ago, we started actually getting like serious manufacturing where we've got like full manufacturing crews and thousands of socks and actual equipment now. Two years ago. Two years, yeah. We will take the prints that we just got from upstairs off those printers. Yep. And we'll bring them down here. And so these are all white socks that are like prepped and ready to get printed. And we've got two presses. So one does the first half, one does the second half. I'm just curious how that works when it comes to... Are you still running ads for the socks? I am, really? yeah. I'm realizing the cost per acquisition. What thing. is yours, do you know? Um, with the ones that I'm kind of trying to scale, yeah. it's around, <laughs> I'd say, 15 to 25. Really? Yeah. I'm 33. Really? 33 what? But that's at scale, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mine's going down over time. Like, I mean, every day gets... Is there repeated customers? Like, what's your churn? They all come back during Christmas. Christmas really? Stuff. Yeah. That's, uh... You see, that's the best part that he has. Why? Because everybody's, everybody's coming back and shopping with him. So what are you doing wrong? If you start a new store, I mean, <laughs> I'm cleaning money right now. Oh really? Oh yeah, absolutely. Join the club. Oh, on the, <laughs> on the sock thing you're talking about? How that, how that does work, I mean, with an operational, I know that you talk about right now, you're focused on acquisition and not profit, and that's my yeah. philosophy as well, especially Q, Q4 is profit time, but then outside of that, acquire customers. Um, how, how do you do that? How do you do that outside of Q4? And Profitably? Maintain, maintain what you have maintain like all of this space yes, and stuff exactly uh you make all your money during christmas the problem is how do you switch from not very profitable things right. to pure profit during christmas i mean it doesn't seem like it'd be an easy transition with in-house no yeah i, no. I think it'd be very stressed I, <laughs> yeah you wouldn't sleep <laughs> i mean do you get stressed brennan or do you just not show it uh, or, uh, a little bit of both. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, certainly stressed, but I've also done the manufacturing for three years now. So this year I'm So you understand, stressed. yeah. But we go to zero every year. What do you mean by that? We literally go to zero. Zero. Dollars. In our bank account. 
Okay, so Brennan just hit a really good point. When it comes to selling products like this, Q4 is money season. This gives you the opportunity to build a large pool of cash to use for the business in the new year. So while business A may make $50,000 profit every month of the year and see a slight increase in sales during Q4, business B makes explosive profit in Q4 with lower profits throughout the year. But in the end, they both produce the same net income. All the days leading up to Q4 are used to acquire customers, even at break-even cost with ads, create a great experience, and eventually see the fruits of our labor. Yeah, and then so once they come off of this sort of whole production line, um, they'll come over here to this table, which is empty right now, but in the morning this will be full of, basically they come off and they're all individual socks. They're not paired together. Yep. And so how do you get them with their correct pair, you know? Right. And so we have a system for that that we, that, that's part of the rendering process as it comes with codes on everything. Everything's oh, coded okay. and barcoded, so it all gets matched up. And then they head over to this table right here where they get packaged. Let's talk a little bit about the sales aspect of yep. Pet Party. What does that look like? Yeah, so our cost per acquisition right now, I mean, it, it goes down, right? Every day as we're getting closer and closer, but like year round, we're probably around $35 cost per acquisition. And this is a little bit more at scale. It's going down, so now it's what, October 23rd, I think? And it's like, we're probably like 31 to 33, somewhere in there. It kind of ranges every day, right? But the rest of the year, it's like seeding the market and providing an exceptional experience. And then people will always come back and buy. What about difficulties from last holiday season? We oversold a little bit. So our bottlenecks we ran into last year, cropping was a big one. We couldn't ship them fast enough. And then labor, we just couldn't make them fast enough in space, so. So were you expecting the success that you guys had last how many seasons? Were you anticipating it? Absolutely not. I mean, we, that was, that was the first Christmas we'd gone into. And so the nicest thing about like e-commerce, you have all your stats, right? So this year I have an idea of how much ad money I'm gonna spend and how much that'll generate revenue. Like I have a very clear vision on that versus last year I had zero information to run off of. If there's one thing I've learned after going through several holiday seasons with e-commerce, it's this. You can never over prepare. I sat there for 10 days and responded to 500 emails that were coming in as fast oh as they were going out. November is going to be a monster of a month and I need to make sure we're ready. Building a team, creating our SOPs, we're doing everything until we have a team around us. I get back to the office and devise a plan. Before I even think about putting more money into advertising, these are my priorities. Before starting, I get on the call with Jude and pop the question. I'm looking for a partner here and not just a virtual assistant. Project management side of things, executing things. Jude takes on this role with my one requirement that she try to set up a camera recording her every now and again when she works to help the story unfold better in this series. I divide the business into two categories. I'll be the strategist, put systems in place, and Jude will be the implementer with the added task of making sure the ship stays afloat and everything is flowing nicely. And under us, we'll begin to build our A-team. I've already purchased our LLC and it arrives in the mail just in time. So I head up to the bank to make things official. Next up on the list, content. Our social media is a barren wasteland. We want to appear as an active brand, so it's time to fix this. When determining what our feed will look like, it all goes back to competition research in part one. The common pattern here is user-generated content but we don't have that. Jude! Instead of paying an agency thousands of dollars for product photography, we'll reach out to influencers with as little as 700 followers, offering to send free products as compensation for three to five pieces of content. We're looking again for photo and video content. It's a fact, influencers are your best bet for product photography. She drafts up an influencer agreement and is off to the races. Hey Winston, how's it going? I wanted to reach out and see if you'd be interested to collaborate with us. Each influencer that agrees is added to this sheet. We call these activations. We'll be adding to this sheet indefinitely. Besides collecting product content for social media, we'll be able to use it on our product pages, email marketing, and advertising. One look at some of the largest e-commerce brands will confirm for you that this stuff is invaluable. Our objective is four activations by the end of October for three of our products. While we wait for the IGC, or influencer generated content to come in will model our feed like BarkBox. This is a $100 million company with a million followers on Instagram and a not one product photo in sight. It's all memes and stuff that aligns with their brand that will make people laugh. Basically, it's just like a branded meme. Still a meme, but we want it to be a little bit branded. Do a couple of those. You can do a couple memes. So we put together different meme card options that we can use on our feed and decide to go with this one and this one. Jude drafts up the calendar for the next 10 days. I give it the okay. And with that, we're set on social media. 
for now. Sounds good. Yeah, I enjoy too. the rest of your day, dude. You Bye-bye. too, Chris. Get some sleep. Uh, yo, yo, yo. I'm wearing the Lulu Puff shirt right now, so you know what that means, right? I see that. Serious business now. So it means business right now. We're talking business. We're focusing on the fulfillment side of things just because that's the most complex side of things right now. And I need your consultation. I need your advice on this, given that it is the category that you oversee in our main business right now. And you do a really, really good job at managing it, especially when things get busy. The workflow, everything is fast. I, I want to replicate that in this new business. Let me go to my whiteboard actually right now. Yeah. Having somebody saving images as they come in is important. So we have the imaging team. You know, sort of need a, a designer create an image, which is you know how, how yours is cutting around or whatever it may be. Then you could have a team of fulfillers or just simply they know the ins and outs of Shopify. We're starting with our fulfillment team, which will be broken up into an imaging team, designers and fulfillers. The imaging team is responsible for downloading the pet photos from the new orders that come in. They'll load them up into the folders for the members of our design team. This is where the cropping and sock design process happens. Once finished, the final files get sent to our fulfillers, to which they'll then submit the customer order through Printify, our print-on-demand partner. Our goal, the moment after a customer places an order, is for this three-step process to take less than 24 hours. Hours. So I want them to update the status right away when they're working on it or when it's already like finished and, and ready for review. Our roadblock right now is training the amount of people needed to hit $1 million in November. Our goal, I mean, look at Pet Party. Our target's around 1.8 to probably 2.2 million. And have 70 people cropping images. 70 probably? Wow. Yeah. Right now, we have three. Such a large team may lead you to believe that profitability isn't the greatest. That's actually the opposite though. Last year, we had to stop our ads right after Black Friday weekend because we weren't able to support the demand. Huge lesson that cost us multiple six figures in extra profit. Very, 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 very important role because they're designing it. They're, they're making it look good. They're, they're, rep they're, they're creating the reputation for your brand. Jude is working on hiring and training for our fulfillment team, while I work on getting someone for customer service. Our current objective is four new team members, fully trained and independent. Thank you, Julia. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, anything to say to the audience? Uh, no. Nothing to say? Camera shy. Camera shy? Yeah. You, you got the spotlight. You're talking to a camera right now. You're talking to a camera. I'm talking to Chris. You're talking to your phone camera. Yeah, she, she didn't know you were standing there. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about where we're at with the Facebook ads. Now, after part one, I actually stopped most of the ads so that we can take the time to build out a team, build out systems, SOPs, get everything organized so that by the time we do scale in November, we don't have to slow down. I turned the ads back on and, well, let me show you. Monday last week, we did about $450 and Tuesday wasn't much different. And as for the rest of the week, it fluctuates with consistency as I continue to push through with my ad testing. Now I'm losing money every single day. That's something that you're not gonna hear a lot of these other people that are doing this say, but it's true. And Brendan actually confirmed for me that, you know, that's okay. It's a highly competitive industry. More upfront investment into getting things working, getting the momentum going. And eventually as the weeks go by, we're gonna slide toward profitability. In part three, we'll go over ads more in depth as we develop more solid results. But for now, know this, we're advertising the dog bone socks. Originally, I started with all these ad creatives, which soon dwindled down to these ones. I have ad sets that are profitable. My issue right now is scaling them and keeping the results consistent. Honestly? Yes. I think it has a good chance to. Oh. That's kind of like the thing that keeps me up. There's so many things that can go wrong, and so it's this really bad cycle you don't want to get into. I definitely want to want to learn a little bit more about it. Da, 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 da. And it just like makes you get really, really hyped.